Hi, I'm Laura Ingalls Gunn. Welcome to my channel. If you're visiting here for the first time because you found me through Virtual Jane Con, let me say welcome and I'm so glad you're here. Many thanks to Bianca Hernandez and several lovely volunteers who have organized this weekend's wonderful event. Like many people, I absolutely fell in love with the costumes of Autumn De Wilde's 2020 version of Emma. The Oscar-winning costume designer, Alexandra Byrne, just created so many lovely, lush layers full of color and details that were so amazing. It, it truly left me wanting to create a Regency era garment in the style of the vision of these two women. When I was watching the movie with my daughter, she was instantly enchanted with the clothing that Harriet wears in the scene where Emma paints her portrait. And she said, I would love to have you recreate that for me. And of course, I can't say no to her. Now, I have in the past recreated other garments that were featured in literature. And so that's actually where I started. I have been a Jane Austen fan for most of my life, and I have numerous books on Jane, books that Jane, of course, wrote, and many more. So the first thing I did was I went to the passage that the scene of the movie is taken from to see if there were any visual clues about the clothing. And actually, there were not. So I opted to follow um, Alexandra Burns' lead in what she had created for that moment. And when I'm often starting a project, I find that it's best to create a binder. And so I just get a three ring binder and I fill it with page protectors. And I had gone to the internet and Googled Harriet's um, Muse Ensemble, Harriet being painted, and I was able to find some really pretty images that showed the beautiful details of the costume that she wears. And then my next step is to then think about, do I have any patterns or is there a pattern available that would work for that? And I did find this pattern by Black Snail Patterns. It's number 119. And I have sewn um, black, black Snail Patterns before. I opt for PDF patterns that I print out at home. And my friend Dixie from Dixie DIY had actually created this dress and spencer that she wore to a Regency event to my home last year. And she had made a YouTube video about that garment that she wore. And I will link that down below. And so in looking at the spencer, I knew that with that pattern, I would need to raise the neckline a bit and also add some darts. So in printing off my daughter's size, this is what the pattern by itself would have looked like. And because our torso is a bit longer, our pattern that we made for her not only needed a higher bust line, but I also needed to lengthen it a little bit. And then I extended it on the side so that I could add the two darts 
that are featured. And of course, the best way to get a great fit is to do a mock-up or a muslin. And so this was my first attempt and we found that the upper portion of the spencer still needed to be raised again. And so then we created a second one and this has the darts in place, if you can see that, and also the higher neckline. And I'm actually going to use this second muslin mock-up as my lining for the garment. So having the pattern in place, that then allows me to begin selecting my fabric choices. Now, if you have followed my channel or my website for any length of time, you know that I am very, very frugal when it comes to purchasing fabric. Most of my fabric I find at estate sales and thrift shops. And in this case, I was very excited because the beautiful velvet spencer in this mustard color, I had already had in my stash this beautiful vintage cotton velvet that I had found, I think, last year and had been saving for a project. And so that was set. And when really starting to study the photograph of the Spencer up close, I noticed that there was some embroidery on either side of the button closure. And the buttons, I took note of the size that they were and their color. And again, going through my stash, I came across some things that I thought would work really well. And so another thing that I do is the smaller pieces that I will possibly using, I just stick those items in a pocket so I have everything with me. And then that way, if I do need to go to a fabric store, you know, I can easily match threads what have you. So in this case, I did have some buttons in my stash that were the right size and gold color. Now, uh, Alexandra Byrne had used a metal button that was embossed, so this is as close as I could get. And, I, and I'm okay, this, this doesn't have to be an exact replica. And yes, you can hear my dog Grace barking in the, in the background. I apologize for that. And in, in the inspiration photo on the Spencer, there's also a tie along the bottom. And this is vintage band uniform ribbon um, trim that although it is the opposite color-wise, um, in the original, it's black, gold black. This is close enough, and I, I've definitely got enough of it, so I'm going to use that. Now, it has been many, many years since I have attempted any embroidery projects, so my idea, and I don't know if it's going to work, is to take these lace appliques, and I'm going to remove the sequins and beading from it and do a bit of fussy cutting and then attach it to the gold colored velvet. And I'll do a little trial run first before I actually apply it to see if that's going to work, but that might be a really good option to get that embroidered look that the Spencer has. 
I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and we have a wonderful fabric district. And so I went down there to see if I could find a lightweight cotton fabric that was striped. And I was very lucky to find this beautiful lightweight cotton and it was $5 a yard, which that was the budget that I had set for myself. It is 60 inches wide, which I needed for this particular pattern. The pattern designer does specify that you need fabric that wide. And so, again, I'm okay that it is not an exact replica of what um, Alexandra Byrne had used to create Harriet's dress. I think overall it's, it's going to be close enough and that dress will be very versatile. Now, the other key piece um, to her clothing is a beautiful silk shawl. Um, that she drapes over her arms. And I went on eBay and I had Googled um, coral silk shawl and I found something that was in my budget and it said it was silk. So I hit the buy button and it just came in the mail. And it's not silk. But, you know, I'm going to use it anyway. Again, overall, once you have the entire ensemble all together, I think people will recognize the inspiration. And even though it is polyester, it does have a nice drape. And so, given that I'm a little bit short on time now, sometimes we just have to work with what we have. And so this is the start of my journey to recreating uh, Harriet's ensemble in this wonderful scene from Emma. I'm getting ready to add the decorative detail to the Spencer bodice. My friend Michelle had given me these scraps of gold um, embroidered and beaded lace netting. Um, it has a little bit of a backing on it. And so my thought was if I fussy cut and removed the beading and kind of overlap it and cut off, I could come up with a pleasing detail. And I do like the look of this. And then that will still allow for the button loops as well as the buttons right here. And then this part of the Spencer will receive two darts, and I may, depending on the look, um, add in a bit of decorative trim here as well, because in the movie, she does have a bit of decorative detailing along the waistband too. So, it's now time to thread my needle with some embroidery floss that is a close match and stitch it down. As a seamstress, I have learned a great deal of patience after spending four hours on thread and beadwork. I decided I didn't like how it looks. So I'm cutting out a new piece. Luckily, I have plenty of extra fabric. I'm getting ready to create Harriet's headpiece, and basically, I'm taking a headband 
that you can get at the dollar store. Um, this one I got at Walmart. They are two for 97 cents. I just clipped these off of a fall garland that I already had. Um, again, you can find faux leaves at most craft stores, dollar stores. And then I had these um, pearl balls and I just have placed it on a toothpick and that way I can punch it into the cardboard box so when I'm spray painting it can get an even coat. So this is what the setup looks like. You can kind of see how I've punched in the toothpick into the cardboard and that way it just kind of contains the spray and the mess. So let's get started. I currently have Project Explosion going on. Here are the beads for Harriet's necklace. And I'm waiting on something to dry for that. And this is the Spencer. Now, Harriet Spencer had two darts. The black snail pattern did not have darts built into it, so I've been trying to figure out dart placement by watching the movie and taking a break from that because I'm ready to set it on fire. So now I'm going to work on the headpiece and Harriet's headpiece has gold leaves, gold balls, on a gold headband. So I'm gonna work on this for a while. Today I am inspired by Nikki to do projects in pajamas. It's gonna be about a 16 hour sewing day today. I have laid out all my supplies. Um, the Spencer has been marked where the buttons will go and then on the opposite side I will need to do thread loops and I use 100% cotton thread that would have been historically accurate. Uh, last night my friend Holly came over and she actually did the stab stitch of the upper edge of the bodice for me. It is Friday the 23rd. Um, Jane Con is next weekend, so I'm on a little bit of a time crunch. And then of course, um, I find it easier to work on uh, buttons and that sort of thing when the spencer is flat. So I will need to attach the edges. So we're in the home stretch with the spencer. I'm pretty pleased with how it is turning out. And then this morning I did a fitting on my daughter for the dress bodice. And I don't know if you can see since it's so tone on tone, but I did a pick stitch on the dress to attach it and that's all by hand and we've adjusted the drawstring closure so that it fits her. I needed to know that to know how much to gather up the waist so I hope to get the waistband on today. It also has the back drawstring closures done. I do have to hem this section so that's all by hand. There is a lot of hand sewing with um, this particular pattern. I am so thankful that my real life friend Dixie DIY um, had done a video uh, last year on the construction of this and I will link to that in the description box down below. So it is time to get sewing. This is the waistband tape that will go on the bottom of the spencer. 
Wish me luck. When doing hand sewing for such a lightweight fabric, I select a very fine, thin needle. And I'm using 100% cotton thread. You can also use linen or silk. And I just run the thread through some beeswax. This helps smooth any lumps or bumps that might be in the thread and then I just kind of smooth it with my fingers. Can you see that? And then for this back section I'm doing a hem stitch and it's so and this was a prick stitch or a pick stitch both terms are commonly used. And it's an overcast day. I'm going to put on a movie and get to work. Let's hear it for all the parents who sew and do other activities. The magicians of multitasking. I'm creating these garments while helping my son enroll in his next semester of college. With each new project, I try to learn a new technique or skill. And this go around, I am teaching myself how to create thread loops. And I have marked out where I want the thread loop. And you just come up and I have a little bit of a tough time pulling the needle through because the thread is so thick. So I use a tool that I often use in jewelry making. And then you take, it's knotted on the back and I have several strands of thread. And then you take another stitch And this time you're going to create a loop, just like this. And then with this, you're going to pull that loop and bring another loop through and pull it tight. And at this point, I can remove my needle. And it's a little bit like finger crochet that you just keep bringing loops through. It really doesn't take that long. Tying it tight between each knot. And then at a certain point, I have my gauge. So I'm not quite there yet. So I need to keep going. Pulling it tight. Sometimes you have to finagle it a little bit. Okay, that's looking like it's pretty close. The other thing that you can check, okay, we're almost there. One or two more. So again, when it gets to this point, I like would prefer to double check after each loop that I make. Now these are pretty heavy duty loops. You can do less amounts of thread, but because the model wearing this 
has a full bust and there might be pressure, I wanna make sure that they're nice and sturdy. So this is the length that I needed. So then we take our needle and put it through this last loop and pull it tight and then we bring it back down and again I need a little bit of assistance bringing that needle through so that creates your loop and then you just knot it off a great new skill I can't wait to use it more and more Harriet has a gathered ruching trim detail near the bottom of her skirt hem. And to create this, it's not hard. You just take a strip of fabric, however wide that you want it, and then on either side I ironed a hem in place um, half inch on either side and then my gathering stitch acts as the hem stitch and then you just pull them fairly equally. It does take a while so it's good to have friends to keep you company. Right Grace? Yes. Okay, so Harriet's sleeve, it appears to be gathered and there is some lace edging and there is also a bit of volume. Um, so my interpretation of this is that I ran three gathering stitches and pulled them up and then held them in place with the hem that I installed. And this is some antique lace uh, that I had in my stash. And it just fit the two sleeves. So I am really pleased about that. And then this is the sleeve sewn up. I think they're gonna be really pretty once they're on the bodice. Good morning. It is six days before Jane Con. I was up until midnight last night hemming the dress and I am up early this morning creating the headpiece that Harriet wore. And it is a headband with some gold ball embellishments and she also has pink hypernum berries and white wax flowers. Now yesterday I went to five grocery stores looking for pink berries. I was able to find one lone sprig. There were no white wax flowers to be had so I'm using white chamomile flowers as well as some roses and carnations from my garden. So thank goodness it's spring. Uh, because these are fresh flowers, I have to build the headpiece on the day of the photo shoot, which is today. Uh, my daughter has Mondays off, so um, I had to work around her schedule as she is my model. So what um, I am doing is I have taken the various flowers and created mini bouquets. And I use the, can you see this? The little clear plastic headbands that you can get at the dollar store for like a hundred. And if you wrap them around the stems, um, they won't come apart and you can't see them. And then, so I have created one for the top and one for the bottom. And then you can kind of see on the other side, I then took gold wire to secure it to the headband. And then I'll add in some 
additional flowers to tuck in to hide the wire. We're attempting Regency hair. Wish us luck. Here she is in all her Grecian model glory. It only took 36 hours to complete this look. So we have the pointed tan suede lace-up shoes and white stockings. And there's the ruching sheer detail at the hem. The shawl was not exactly what I wanted it to be, but it gives the overall impression. And of course, her glorious headband and pearl and coral necklace. Now Harriet had Grecian inspired earrings in the movie. Uh, I'm sure that they were antique. We've opted for pearl grape leaf clusters, which were a trend in the Regency era. You can find reproductions from the Lady to Tell, who creates beautiful grape cluster earrings in several colors. And of course, the beautiful velvet bodice with the double darts and embellished front closure. Harriet, would you mind spinning around? And we'll take a closer look at the back. And we had to bring in the seam right here because both she and I are notorious for our small shoulders. So that was really the only adjustment that we made on the bodice other than adding the tie band embellishment. One of the adjustments that I made to the dress pattern is they had you cut a slit in the fabric. This fabric is so sheer. That was a wardrobe malfunction waiting to happen. So I actually made a center seam and it has a center seam closure. Um, there is just two ties, one at the waist and one up here. I may add a third in the center um, if she wants to wear the dress in the future without the spencer to give her a bit more coverage. Fort Worth area and we have a wonderful fabric.
perfect.